doing a bit of a rearranging of the garage. Do you think I can fit two cars in here? Hmm. So as I mentioned in my last video, I was considering selling the Beat and also my BMW i3 to get one car to replace them both. That particular car was a Toyota GD86 or a Subaru BRZ. And I went out and test drove one, thought it could work for me. So I sold the BMW, got about 20 grand for it, pretty happy with that. And I was about to put the beat up for sale and then I went to see a Toyota GD86 and take a better look around a longer test drive. And after sitting in and out of the back seats and the front passenger seat, there was just no way I was going to be able to make it work um, as an occasional family car and fit my seven year old son in the back of it. And it really broke my heart, but it wasn't the right decision to make. Uh, so I was back to the drawing board, but the BMW was already sold. So I was left needing a daily driver. So here's what I got. Yes, it's another Honda. So this is a Honda Accord 2 litre petrol. It's K-Series engine but not the hot one or not the Type S or Euro or or anything like that. I got it for really cheap. After selling the BMW for 20 grand, I got this for 200 euro. <laughs> it did need some work because it'd been sitting for a couple of years. So gave it a service, gave it new rear brakes, gave it two new wheel bearings at the back, new tires, uh, a few bits and bobs, refilled the air con, um, and it's driving great now. It's a fairly high spec uh, example. It's uh, an executive model, so it's got leather seats, heated leather seats, although the heated part isn't working. It's got cruise control, heated wing mirrors, um, air con, electric seats, things like that. It's suiting the job perfectly at the moment as the daily run around. I thought it would just be a short term thing, but I might actually hold on to it for a while. So as you know, I measured up the garage recently and started shuffling things around. And the reason for that is I am buying another K car. I'm always on the lookout for things like Suzuki Auto Works, Daihatsu, Miras, Subaru Rexes, things like this. They rarely ever come up for sale. I have alerts set up uh, for various classified sites in Ireland for six or seven years now. When they come up, it never seems to be the right time, or I can't get insured or something that makes it not work out. So when one came up this time, I was determined. I already have a classic car policy with the Honda Beat, and I called up the insurance company to add a second car to that, and they gave me a quote of an extra 25 euro for the next nine months. So I definitely had to go see it now. So I test drove it a couple of days ago, and I just drove about 80 or 100 kilometers to go and pick it up. And here it is. Yes, it's a Daihatsu Mira Avanzato TRXS R4. It's a mouthful. This is my first Daihatsu, never owned one before. And it's also my first four wheel drive car. So, new things. This one definitely does need a bit of love though. It's gonna be a project for me to clean up and get it back to its full health. As part of the deal, a load of spare parts came with the car. A ridiculous amount, in fact. A whole body kit, a slightly different version of this car. It was the Quarry uh, Avanzato, which sold in the UK, uh, but very similar car. So it comes with front bumpers, rear bumper. Uh, it also comes with uh, front arches, a new bonnet, 
new boot lid and a whole engine minus a few of the bits and ancillaries and turbo and whatever there is a chance that I may be able to get a couple more parts in the deal as well which is a brand new turbo and some headlights although well, these ones seem to be fine um, but if I can get those it would be great as well so I'm literally just back in the door from picking the car up and you can see all the parts in the back This is the bonnet, this is the boot lid back here. Here's the engine. Here are the wings and the bumpers and side skirts. So I've already decided what to call this project. So let's take a tour around Project Mirabelle. I'll start with what's good. Mechanically it seems very strong, the engine pulls well, it drives great. It's actually more tolerable on the motorway than this. It still revs like over 5000 revs but uh, it's, it's fine. There doesn't seem to be any serious mechanical problems at the moment. A lot of the work that's immediately needed is around the aesthetics of the car. So I'll start with the rust. The worst place that you find the rust on this is just on the leading edge of this bonnet. You can see if you look underneath here how bad it is. So something definitely needs to be done about that. Loads of stickers from the previous owners. So I'll show you all the spare parts that came to this car later on. But just to show you quickly, I do have a spare bonnet that's in far, far better condition, although in the wrong colour. Continuing with the rust along the front, this core support here, which I think is removable in two places, um, is quite badly rusted. This is the worst part here. It's not gone all the way through and still seems solid underneath. So what I'll probably do is take unbolt that, take it out, take off all these kind of brackets and stuff, wire wheel it all back and paint it up again. The other area that needs some attention is the rear arch. So again, there's no holes. It's not too crusty, it's not giving way, so I think it's just surface rust. And I'll do the same, I'll rub this back, fill it in if I need to, and then paint it. The unfortunate part of that is somebody has done some sort of crazy paint job on this where the car was originally silver, but they put a gradient that goes from a dark metallic silver, a gunmetal grey. It's kind of hard to see. And it gradually fades up the car all around the entire body kit. Not my choice, doesn't look terrible, but I wouldn't personally do that. So what that'll mean is that when I'm trying to touch this up, it'll be impossible, just like somebody's tried to do it already. You'll never match it. I could possibly paint the bottom half of the car from this door line down, paint it all black or something like that. I'm definitely not gonna respray the whole car. I'm keeping this project on a budget. You can see where these, this gradient paint job had been done before is flaking off in a couple of areas. And there's the usual stone chips and things like that from a car this age. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be any serious rust underneath. It's, it's not too bad. There's not really too many modifications on the car. This is a slightly larger intercooler, which is not in great shape. But the car comes with two spare intercoolers. They're the standard ones, so I think I'll put one of those back on and they seem to be in really good condition. Um, again, some of these hoses and, and stuff might be just to adjust to this larger intercooler. Um, so I'll try and tidy all that up. 
Another modification that's here is there is a Sard blow off valve, which is incredibly loud. I wouldn't normally fit something like that, but I have to say it's great fun when you're driving the car. I found a video on YouTube from 11 years ago of this exact car, and it sounds like they just installed this dump valve. Check it out. <laughs> Standard airbox, which is uh, unusual. A lot of these cars have been modified with aftermarket ones. Uh, one of the main reasons for that I just discovered is that the air filters for these, kind of like the Honda Beat, are impossible to find in my local market. So you have to order them from Japan, which turns a very cheap part into something incredibly expensive. So I might explore other options for that. Everything is really easy to get to. The Oil filter is accessible behind the number plate here as a hole and you can screw it out there. Obviously the uh, plugs are on the top there. Fuel filter over here, air filter there. It's all easy. What's interesting about this engine is although it is also a 660cc engine like the Beat, this one is four cylinder. Still revs to the moon, but this one is turbocharged. It lives down there. So a very different drive to the beat. Not linear at all in its power delivery. It gives a real shove when the turbo comes on and it pulls a lot harder because of that extra torque. Inside it is pretty standard. It comes with these fabulous seats unique to this car. I seem to be buying cars with really interesting seats, as you know, the zebra seats that come with this. They're in really good condition. There's no wear at all really on them. The fabric is a little bit loose. Um, and something that you don't really see in the pictures is there's these kind of two lines that come down like a V um, built into it and also out the other side. So really interesting seat. They do hold you well um, and they're comfortable. But other than that, it is a really low rent interior. Compared to the Beat, this is definitely a step down in quality. Apart from the steering wheel being horrendous, all the switch gear is just not really that nice to use. The gear selector is pretty terrible. There's a lot of slop in this, even when you're in gear. It does, ha does have some added extras, which is this cup holder which I did use on the drive home There's some sort of I don't know sunglass holder here or something but I did notice that this was a bit wobbly and then I realized that it's held on by some double-sided tape and nothing else there is a hole over here so I think maybe you can screw it into the dash so I don't know whether I'm gonna keep that at all or just remove it the stereo is obviously an aftermarket doubled in it sounds absolutely terrible, but I don't think it's because of the head unit. It's because of the speakers. Only one speaker seems to be working. That one is not. And it's like only the tweeter part of it is working. It's just really, really bad sound. So I'll probably have to replace the speakers. And maybe the head unit also. There is a turbo timer here, but I don't know if it's actually connected because it doesn't seem to be turned on. So I'll have to investigate that. This is one problem that we'll have to fix. It's a pretty simple one. This is actually held on with a kind of a plastic screw, so I'm not surprised it's broken after this many years. The driver side one is okay. Electric windows on both sides. Um, there's also electric mirrors, fog lights, rear demister. There is a rear wiper with a separate reservoir. There is a HKS boost gauge installed, which does work. It's pretty cool. 
and in the back is like new there is no air at all so let's have a look at the boot nice big wing and a kind of diffuser looking thing with the reverse light in here so one issue I do need to solve is this parcel shelf it's missing little poles or parts to stick out of here and go on to the, uh, the shelf holder up here back here there is actually a spare wheel I've no idea if it's the right one random boost pipe and a jack which is meant to go down here but doesn't seem to fit there's also a bit of surface rust down here so I'll have to treat that So all in all, very interesting car. Uh, the drive home was great. A um, couple of things I did notice is that, number one, it uses hardly any fuel. Uh, it was about 80 kilometers back and the needle barely moved at all. Um, so that's great in the current climate. One thing that I definitely will need to address is the suspension. I know I've become a bit of a nerd over the suspension on the beat, but what was really unusual about this, I couldn't put my finger on why the ride was so bad until I got to a speed bump. And when I went over the speed bump, I noticed that the front was firm, but you know, not, not too bad. But the rear was absolutely rock solid. There was no giving it whatsoever. Um, you would literally be bouncing down the road, even on the motorway, and then you hit a speed bump and it's like there's no suspension at all on the rear. With a very quick ride height test, you can see that the front wheels, you can fit three fingers in. On the rear, you can only fit one. So it's sitting much lower on the rear. You can see it visually here. So I'm gonna take out the springs and have a look at them and see if I can source some longer springs for the rear. It'll hopefully give more travel and a softer ride. Car came with these really interesting sprint heart wheels that you see on a lot of Japanese K cars. They're 13 inch with pretty chunky tires. So they're 175 profile. They must be like anodized from the factory. And while some of them are okay, like that one, others, the anodizing is wearing off. You can see where there was a sticker on it at one point. And some of them look almost completely silver, like this one. I'm not sure I'll do about anything about that, to be honest, because it doesn't bother me that much. So here are some of the spare parts that came with the car. A full engine. Two intercoolers. A steering wheel hub. Bonnet, boot lid, side skirts, and the bottom part on the doors. That's actually not on my silver one, but it's on the other version. Rear bumper, front bumper, wings. Most of these are generally in better condition, other than the paint being faded, than on my one. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be swapping all these parts on. We'll probably only use the bonnet and the intercooler to start. So that's a quick overview of my new project, Project Mirabelle. Salon.